<laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's doing all right. Kind of took about a minute. Hopefully, I'm not a minute late. <laughs> good to be back with everybody. Uh, man, seems like it's been forever, huh? Uh, missed everybody. Hey, Madeline, how you doing? Cousin Nora, what's happening? Happy Tuesday. And uh, like I said, it is good to be back. Uh, yeah, I had a good time with the family. Uh, doing a little camping. Hey, Cynthia, good morning. Roseanne, how you doing? And, uh, but uh, hey, Dina, good morning. Wow, everybody's popping right on. <laughs> good to see everybody. Oh, my bride's here this morning. How you doing, Karen? CJ, how you doing? Good morning. Be blessed. And uh, man, I might just sit here and just say good mornings. <laughs> Hey, Trisha, how you doing? It's good to see everybody. But I want to talk to you this morning. About, you know, I see you see the bottom ribbon says urgent prayer. And, and uh, it doesn't always necessarily mean that we need to, uh, something's going on right now. Uh, of course, we know a lot of things are happening, uh, probably amongst families and and uh, those kind of things. But I do want to talk to you about prayer and how urgent it is and how important it is. Uh, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. Hey, Lois, how you doing? Uh, Finney, how you doing? Uh yeah, I, I I hear people say, you know, I don't know how to pray, and uh, I'm still learning how to pray, and and uh, I guess the point to me is, you know, as long as you're praying, it's all right. But you know, there there are right ways and wrong ways. You know, we we know that uh, we can pray selfishly, obviously at times, uh, uh, and then we can certainly forget about ourselves in prayers. Uh, sometimes when we're praying for ourselves, it doesn't mean we're praying selfishly. You know, sometimes we need to just come before the Lord and and spend time and, and just have a conversation. And to me, that's what prayer is. Uh, uh, but to get down serious, uh, how serious prayer is, is uh, a lot of times depending on our circumstance or, or what we allow to control our lives. And, and uh, but it's in, in those times where that's where we need to go before the Lord and just have a chat with them. And usually, you know, especially in difficult times, uh, again, I use Stephen as examples, you know, when yeah, uh, you know, when he stood his ground, uh, you know, sharing the gospel and, and the enemy came against him. And, you know, uh, to me, he immediately went into an urgent, uh, urgent type prayer thing. He went before God, even in the midst of being stoned. And I think about that. I'm like, wow. You know, in the worst case scenario, his sights were set on the Lord. And, uh, you know, I so much want to be in that place myself. You know, and like, no matter what's happening around me. The storms are coming, whatever's happening, everything seems to be going wrong. I pray that I always see that as a time to, to spend with the Lord, no matter what's happening, whether it's our health, whether it's anything, you know, uh, it's important to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about Daniel again real quick. And I'm going to share uh, uh, in Daniel chapter six, verse 10. I'm going to share that one. But you know, Daniel was a guy, you know, you read about Daniel's life, man. He just, he just was committed uh, to what he was doing. He's in exile. He's in captivity. He's in Babylon. You know, I know he got given positions. He, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were given positions. But, you know, they had a ton of enemies around him always because guess what? They weren't on their home ground. Okay. They were captives. They were aliens uh, in a foreign land and uh, taken there against their will. And uh, but Daniel just never forgot where his peace and grace came from. And that was always before God. Even when the enemy came against him under the worst scenarios, he just took it to God. He just took it to the Lord. And I'm like, man, you know, and so I've really been looking at that myself. It's like, man, no matter what happens. And I'll share a little testimony. We had an awesome camping time, awesome camping trip. It was great to be with family and and of course, you know, you get home, you're a little tired. You got, you know, from camping, you have a lot of stuff. You got to unpack stuff. And we had to unpack the RV. And and my poor son-in-law didn't do uh, things the way I felt like he needed to do that. And I, and I chewed him out. You know, I, I I got, to be honest with you, I got ugly with him. Uh, chewed him out. And it was pretty hard on him. And uh, and I walked away from there. We got everything put away. And, and Karen said, you know, I'm tired. I want to go out to get something to eat. And uh so I, I'm, I'm like, I'm good with that. You know, <laughs> got to eat. So we go out, but I, I was just sort of praying in my spirit that, that I, I just felt terribly bad about that. How I treated my son-in-law, you know, I call him my son. I, you don't even call him my son-in-law, but, uh, uh, 
And uh, throughout our whole dinner time, you know, Karen and I were, yeah, we had, it was a quiet dinner, but, you know, we chatted a little bit. But all in my spirit, I, I just felt bad. And to me, that was an urgent time. It was an urgent time. And it was so awesome just to have that little fellowship. And I didn't share with Karen uh, right away uh, then, but, you know, just the Lord just speaking to my spirit. And, and I'm just in my spirit, I'm talking to God. And, and uh, you know, I just couldn't wait to get home. And, uh, you know, Karen said, Where are you going? I said, I need to go across the street. And I and I went across and I apologized to my son-in-law uh, for being a, a heel. <laughs> I'll say that. And but that's how important prayer is. Even for something, you know, some people might think insignificant. You know, we have words with one another and and those kind of things. But you know, it just seems like you know God takes you to to spirit Himself. You know, His Spirit just takes you to that place of prayer. Good morning, Harry. Rob, how you doing, brother? And, so it's always important, no matter what the situation is, you go before God. And guess what? He directs you to do the right thing. He directs you to do the right thing. But really quick back to Daniel. Uh, in Daniel 6, you know, there was a plot against him personally. You know, they got King Darius. You know, the Persians were in, in control. And, and uh, the leadership got around King Darius and said, hey, you know, don't let anybody bow down to any other gods except your gods. Sign this thing. Sign, seal, and deliver it. And, uh, and Darius did seal it. Once it's done, it was done. But you know what? That didn't deter Daniel at all. He knew the situation. He knew the consequences. But he was. it didn't matter. It didn't matter. The urgency for him was to be before the Lord in prayer. But let's go to Daniel chapter 6 in verse 10. I want to read this. Now listen to this. It, now Daniel knew that the writing was signed. And what did he do? He went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he as was his custom since the early days. You know, he never swayed. He never wavered. He knew that he had God's ear. He knew he had God's ear. And guess what, folks? Even though he, he, he prayed that three times that day, went against the sign edict, uh, uh, did what he knew what was right to do, they still came and got him. They caught him. They held him accountable. And guess what? Remember, he was thrown into the lion's den. The king was a mess over that all night. Couldn't sleep. Came back. Daniel told him not to worry. The outcome was awesome. We never know what the outcome is going to be, but we know what the beginning needs to be. And no matter what the situation if our government right now said you cannot pray, you cannot read your Bible, you cannot go to church, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Man, I hope there's a bunch of Daniels out there saying, you know what, no matter what, that's against God's rules. That's against God's regulations. I'm going to pray in spite of everything, no matter what the outcome, because God is God. Isn't that incredible? Man, isn't that, that just exciting, isn't it? So, folks, let's let's try to get that mindset. Let's let's pray urgently. Let's pray in that sense that no matter what, what can they do to me? They can't take me away from my Lord. I'm going to pray. And you want through that whole result, you never know of those folks that might come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's the purpose of it all, isn't it? Well, guys, be blessed. It's good to be back uh, in the saddle. Uh, 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 I don't know. It's just good to be back. I'm always humbled. I love you guys. It's great to spend time before you. And, uh, you know, allow, allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Go before the Lord no matter what's happening. God will take care of the results. Okay? We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for morning tidbits. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you. I thank you for our church family. I thank you for our families in general. I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to continue to do in our lives. So, Father... Always remind us that we're being taught. We're being trained. We've not arrived. We don't know it all. We're in the learning process still. Help us not to be so smart. We forget the basics. Help us not to be so smart that we have all the answers and we don't come to you for the real ones. Father, I just pray that you would keep us humble always and that we would always, no matter what, be willing to come before you to seek the results and trust you for them, no matter what we see coming, Lord, we know that you're in control. And Father, that our heart's desire would be that, that 
that would be a testimony to a world where there's so much bitterness, so much anger, so much hate. Father, that they would see the love of Christ shine through it all. Father, that people would come to a saving knowledge of you. And that should be our heart's desire above all and over all. And Father, as Daniel was a testimony to the king, Father, that we could be a testimony to ours. Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we give you glory, honor, and praise for it all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, folks, again, love you. This is Pastor Randy from Iron Faith Fellowship Church, back in the saddle with Morning Tidbits, and we'll see you tomorrow morning for some more Morning Tidbits. Have an awesome, awesome day in the Lord. Bye-bye.